Good morning and welcome. As it's Remembrance Sunday, we're starting our live stream with a short reflection and a minute's silence. If you have a poppy to hand, that would be really helpful. If you don't, there are pictures of poppies on the screen. Take a look at your poppy. Poppies are bright and cheerful flowers. God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died in war. We remember all the joy they brought to families and friends and all the good things they did for their home and for their country. Now look at the red petals. Red reminds us of danger and harm. God, we ask that you would be close to those who are still facing danger each day. God, would you give courage to the armed forces and compassion to all who help others. Now place your whole hand over the poppy. Poppies are are also fragile and need to be handled gently. Thank you, God, that you care for those who are hurting and for those who are sad. God, would you comfort all who are grieving the loss of someone they love. Finally, place a finger on the centre of the poppy. God, we ask that you would help us to play our part in working for peace in the world. We thank the Church of England for this short reflection. and We're going to have a minute's silence now. Good morning and welcome. Welcome, we're Duncan and Lorna. We have the privilege of leading Epsom Vineyard Church. If you're new to this, there will be a, a Zoom call at the end of this at the end of this live stream. We would love to see you on there. We'd love to meet you. If, if you'd like to come and chat with us, uh, that would be great. If you are new and that's a little bit too much for a step so far, uh, please do get in touch. We'd love to meet you for a virtual coffee again because we're back into lockdown mm. uh, situation. But we would genuinely love to just meet up, say hello, even if for uh, coffee over Zoom. You can email us on... Hello at epsomvineyard.org. Awesome. Or if you need any other information, epsomvineyard.org, www.epsomvineyard.org, is a great place to see our calendar and things that are going on in the life of the church. And you can also connect with us on Facebook or YouTube. So today we're doing All Age Church again. We did this about three weeks ago last time and we described it as spaghetti bolognese church. Um, So it's not uh, jam sandwiches and jelly and ice cream on plastic plates just for kids. Equally, it's not um, a posh meal with really grown up (laughs) tastes on fine china. You know, that sort of really deep theology. It's not that that's just for adults. It's spaghetti bolognese, homemade, comforting, um, something for everyone everybody can get stuck in might be a little messy but should be fun i I probably should say the zoom that i I talked about earlier we will continue that spag ball feel we did this last time we had a a a spag ball church together um (laughs) we we had a kahoot quiz which was brilliant probably one of the best zooms we've had post church um please come along please join us afterwards the winner of the Kahoot quiz last time won a Lorna cake. They did. So that might be just up for grabs I, again. Just sort of <laughs> flag that up here now. Um, of course, Life Fire Church isn't just around Sunday mornings, around our live stream. Throughout the midweek, we've got our midweek life groups, which includes our Alpha running at the minute. 
Um, and if we're not running our Parenting for Faith course tonight, but that happens next Sunday. If you want any more details, please just email hello at epsomevineyard.org. You'll get all of that straight through to us. Okay, we have a special treat this morning. We've got one song. Uh, another special treat. Another special treat. Yeah. We've got um, a, a song as normal coming up, and then we've got Natasha's recorded a song that Beth wrote about about hearing from God, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we've got a couple of songs now. Um, so enjoy. Uh, join in that with Natasha's song. It's quite easy to, to, to follow to pick and, and yep. pick up. Uh, Don's going to pray for us before we dive into that. Lord, we just welcome you into our homes. We just say thank you for this morning. Thank you for our friends, our family, our church family, who are just, yeah. we're connected with over this live stream, if nothing else. Lord, thank you for keeping us safe this week. We just ask that throughout this morning you would speak to us yeah. all. Lord, we would hear your voice clearly. Your peace be with us. Your spirit be with us. Amen.
Welcome back. So today we are all together again. Um, we last did this three weeks ago. Last time we did it, we described it as spaghetti bolognese church, something that everyone can enjoy whatever your age. It's not just jam sandwiches and jelly and ice cream on plastic plates just for kids, but it's not a fancy meal with really grown up tastes on fancy china just for adults. It's homemade, good for everyone, spag bol on everyday plates. It may be a little messy at times, but I really hope there is something for everyone. You know, in the Bible, there are lots of stories of all of God's people from the very young to the very old gathering together to worship God, to seek him or to pray for specific things. So doing church all together is something that I'm pretty sure that God really loves. So last time we talked about how God was our friend and we thought about the sort of conversations that we have with our friends. And then we talked about chatting to God and how we can talk to him about anything and everything, wherever and whenever we are. We also tried chatting to God. If you remember, I suggested a whole list of things that you could tell God right there and then, from your favourite colour to the name of someone who hurts your feelings. I really hope that you've had some time to chat to God over the past few weeks. I'm finding I'm spending more time chatting to God during this time when we can't see our friends as freely as we could. Church gatherings are not happening, so when we can't gather to meet with God together, I'm having more conversations with friends who are more and more dependent on hearing the voice of God in their own personal lives. We will meet together at some point, but for now, we're, we're going to do it this way. So today we're thinking about a two-way conversation with God. You know, it'd be pretty boring for us and for God I think if all we did was tell him things and he never told us anything back. Just think about if you had a friend and all they did was tell you stuff but they never asked you about you. You'd get pretty bored and probably fed up. Equally if you had a friend who never wanted to tell you anything about themselves and you had to constantly keep the conversation going, you might feel like they never trusted you. God wants to talk to us. And as we'll see this morning, there are loads of examples in the Bible of God talking to people. So Jack's now going to read a couple of Bible verses that tell us about how much God wants to speak to us. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So this was God speaking to one of his people in the Old Testament times, way before Jesus. He said, call to me and I will answer you. Not, I might answer you if you try very, very hard, or I might answer you if you are very, very good, but I will 
answer you. John 10 verses 2 to 4. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Thank you, Jack. And then this last verse that Jack's read was written by John, one of Jesus' best friends. And he's recording what Jesus said. Jesus said, his sheep, that's us, know the shepherd, that's Jesus, and they listen to his voice and they know his voice. Now, in the days before Jesus, there was a boy called Samuel and he heard a voice in the middle of the night calling him, Samuel, Samuel. Now, he thought it was Eli, his guardian, but it wasn't Eli. So Eli sent him back to bed. It happened a couple more times before Eli realised that it was God speaking. So he said to Samuel, go back to bed. And when you hear the voice again, say this, speak for your servant is listening. And that's exactly what Samuel did. And God spoke to him. You can read about this in 1 Samuel 3. Now, around the time that Jesus was born, we flipped forward a little bit. There were two old people, Anna and Simeon. God had told Simeon that he would see the Messiah, that's Jesus, before he died, which he did. Anna had spent many years at the temple praying and God spoke to Anna about Jesus. And she told Mary and Joseph what God had said. You can read about Anna and Simeon in the gospel that was written by Luke in chapter 2. So we have two stories here of people in the Bible who God spoke to. Why am I telling you about them today? Well, Samuel was very, very young. And it actually says that he didn't know the Lord, and yet God spoke to him. Simeon and Anna were old, and God spoke to them too. So that's why I'm telling you about them, so that you know that God will speak to young people and old people and people who don't yet know God. So basically, if you're listening to this today, then God can speak to you. Now, as I've been talking, Duncan, who you can't see right now, has been throwing these bits of rolled up paper at me. A bit rude, don't you think? And I've been ignoring them. Also, maybe a little bit rude. He's been trying to communicate with me, but I've just not bothered to catch these bits of paper. I wonder, how many times have people been trying to communicate with you, but you've just not been listening? Are there times when you've been watching your favourite TV programme, and someone has been calling you from another room and you just kind of zoned out? Or have you ever been on the phone to someone and they've been talking and you've been concentrating on your social media feed on another device? I think my worst is when I'm reading something on my phone and one of my kids comes to talk to me and I know it's something important that they're trying to tell me, but I just can't switch off from what I'm reading, so I don't really hear them. We're going to take just a moment now to ponder those times when you might switch off and not listen to people or not give someone the attention they are requesting. Brilliant. OK, now what if God is talking to us, but we just don't notice, or we just ignore him or we're just not sure what God sounds like? Kind of like Duncan throwing these bits of paper at me and I ignored them. What if I need to learn to catch these and see what's being said? Shall we open them up and see what's inside? We're going to find that there are lots of different ways that we can catch what God is saying to us. You may normally talk about hearing from God or listening to him. And you'll notice that I'm talking about catching from God because listening just sounds like we have to hear with our ears. But God made our whole bodies so that he could communicate with us in many different ways. Right. Let's do this one first. Let's see what it says. OK. This is a picture about dreams. There are loads of stories in the Bible of God speaking to people through dreams. Now, to be honest, I don't really like dreaming because when I dream, I feel like I've not rested. So I don't 
pretend to catch from God in this way, but maybe I should ask him to talk to me in my dreams. Can you think of any stories right now? You have 30 seconds to chat to the people around you or think on your own of stories of dreams in the Bible. Feel free to write them on the chat on the Facebook or YouTube feed. And if God speaks to you through dreams, chat to people about that. Okay, so you might have come up with Joseph way back in the Old Testament, the Joseph with the Technicolor dream coat. Joseph also, also told Pharaoh what Pharaoh's dreams meant. So God spoke to Pharaoh in a dream, even though he wasn't one of God's people. Right, let's open another one. Let's have this one. Ah, this is eyes and ears. Eyes and ears. So... This isn't one that really happens to me. It's another one that doesn't really happen to me. But there are people who have heard audible voices with their ears and actually seen things from God. I've heard stories of people seeing angels with their actual eyes, not just a picture in their mind, but they're actually seeing an angel. Do you know, you can also see what God is doing. And it's, so he's still communicating to you. If he's healing something physical, you might actually see something like a scar or eczema healed. In the Bible, there was Paul and Silas. They were in prison because they'd been telling people about Jesus and the prison doors were opened through an earthquake. You can read that in Acts 16. So God was doing stuff that they could actually see. OK, let's do another one. Let's try this one. Ah, OK, so this one there's a picture of a heart, OK, and it's got it's got some houses in the middle of it. So this this is um, when we just before we moved to Epsom a few years ago, I had a real sense. I just knew that I knew that I knew that God had said we needed to be good neighbours when we moved. It was it was like it was in my heart. I just knew it. And we were to love our neighbours. It's one of the things that Jesus tells us to do, love our neighbours. But I'd not really understood it in terms of our actual neighbours at our old house. I don't remember any pictures in my heads or words or anything like that. I just knew that I knew that I knew that this is what God wanted for us when we moved to Epsom. So in the Bible, uh, we see this as well. After Jesus had died, when the church was first starting, there were lots of things the leaders needed to work out, like what were all the rules and how should they behave? And there was a time when they wrote to new followers of Jesus and they said this, it seemed good to the spirit and to us. And then they explained all about what, what, they, what they knew God had said. They knew that they knew that they knew. You can read that in Acts 15. Why don't we take 30 seconds just to think about those things, those things where you know that you know that you know, or dreams, or things that you might actually see or hear with your eyes and your ears. Take 30 seconds just to chat to the people around you about whether they've heard God and they've caught things from God in those ways. Cool. Well done. Right. Got another one. Let's try this one. OK. Oh, this is a picture of a really, really sad face. So this one was recently when there were the when there was the horrible news of the death of George Floyd. I woke up in the morning feeling really, really, really sad. I was I was just really upset. Now, in the past, I've discounted my emotions because I thought that they weren't really to be trusted. But I'm learning that my emotions are God given and that God 
often uses my emotions to speak to me, especially when I have a really strong emotional response. It's like God saying, Lorna, this is really important and you need to spend some time on this. Now, it doesn't have to be sadness. It could be joy, excitement, wonder, anger over something that's in unjust. It could be an overwhelming peace. And there are loads of stories in the Bible of Jesus being sad, being angry, being peaceful. Why don't you, next time you read in the Bible, have a think about how God might have been feeling in that story. If there's stories about Jesus, think about what, God, what Jesus might have been feeling. OK, one more. OK, this one is about things in my mind. Now, I know I've got another couple of ones to do with this. So I'm going to open those as well. I think maybe this one. Yep, that's a mind bubble with a picture in it. And this one is a mind bubble with music in it. So these are times when God's spoken to me in my mind. So pictures, you could get pictures in your mind. Why don't we're gonna try something? Close your eyes and draw a picture of your house in your head. Can you see your house in your head? Now that space where your picture of your house is, that's your imagination. God has given us our imagination and he uses it to chat to us. Um, this one was um, musical notes. And um, God often, actually for me, he, he puts songs in my head. It might be just the lyrics of the songs or it might be the tune. We could try that again. Can you sing the first line of happy birthday in your head? Just try and find that space in your head where you can hear that. Um, and then this one is, is words. This is actually a Bible verse. Um, Early on in lockdown, um, I just felt God saying to me, I will be with you. We've got some, we'd, we'd had some difficult things to deal with and I just felt God say, I will be with you. And it reminded me of when God said to Moses, I will be with you. You can read that in Exodus 3. Um, so those spaces in your head where God can speak to you and God often sp actually speaks to me the most in my mind. Um, some people have full colour movies with words and sounds and you know my pictures aren't always quite as um full color um but that's an that's that's just it's a it's a way that god often speaks to us i think i have one more ah hands okay so this is to both supposed to represent our bodies and our skin so this for me god doesn't often do this with me but sometimes and this one represents a time when my hands were tingling a bit not a lot but I, I knew that God was near and that he might do something and he was reminding me that he loves to heal broken things um, I often don't have a big physical response but sometimes I feel my body really at peace now we do have a story um, of, of our lovely Geetha, who had a really obvious experience of catching from God with her body when we planted Epsom Vineyard Church. Geetha and Gopal weren't planning to come with us to start Epsom Vineyard, but at, at our commissioning, Geetha felt an actual physical shove in her, on her back, which pushed her out of her seat to come and join the team who were going to start Epsom Vineyard with us. Um, in the Bible, there's a lovely story of um, way back in the Old Testament and they, they built the temple and the presence of God was really, really strong and the priests couldn't do their job. They couldn't physically get into the temple because of the presence of God. So it really affected their bodies. You can read about that in 2 Chronicles 7. So with, with your imagination and, and pictures and words, there's loads of examples in the Bible of people having pictures of God or pictures that, that God had given to them. There's a story of um, Paul who planted loads of the churches, loads of the first churches after, after Jesus has died. And when he was on one of his journeys, he had a vision of a man from a place called Macedonia saying, come here, we need you to help us. And Paul recognised this vision as God speaking to him. You can read about that in Acts 16. So that's a whole load of examples of how God can speak to us. Why don't you spend 30 seconds thinking about catching from God with your mind, um, with your body and with your emotions. 30 seconds to chat to the people around you.
Brilliant. Now, of course, we also have our Bibles. This is really important. We've seen lots of ways I've suggested that God can speak to us, and there are examples of all of these in the Bible. But we shouldn't forget that the Bible is where God speaks really clearly. The Bible tells us about God's character, who he really is. It tells us about how he looked after his people over many years. It tells us about Jesus and how he came to earth because he loves us. The Bible tells us how much God loves us. It's really important because it's where we can check that what we're hearing in all these different ways is actually from God and not just ourselves making things up. If we're hearing, if what we're hearing lines up with the God in the Bible and the sort of things he might say, then it's probably from God. So if you thought you'd heard that you should stand up for someone who's been bullied in your class at school and you felt that God would give you the strength for that, then you've probably heard from God because God wants us to defend people who are being bullied. If, you're, if what we're hearing is nothing like what we see of God in the Bible, then it's probably not from God. So if you thought you'd heard that you should join in with the bullies and make fun of one of your classmates, then that's probably not from God because God's somebody who loves everyone and he tells us to love everyone. Okay, I have one last thing for us all to do together. Some of you may have done this before with me, but just go with it. God often speaks a different thing when we do this at a different time. So I'm just going to chat to God really quickly for you all. And then I'm going to suggest a question that you can ask God. For now, we're going to trust that the first thing that pops into your head is from God, okay? And then I'm going to suggest another question for you to ask God. So you ask God these questions in your head if you can, and you wait and you see what you catch from him. Okay, I'm just going to chat to God. You might want to close your eyes. God, would you be with us? Um, thank you for, all, for everybody who's listening now, and I ask that you would speak clearly to them and that they would catch from you in whatever way um, works for them today. Okay, this is the question I want you to ask God. God, if you could play a game with me right now, what would it be? And you're just going to wait and catch what God says. And then I want you to ask God, God, why that game? And you're just going to wait and catch from God. Okay, how was that? The first time I did this, I got Monopoly. And the reason for the game was because God wanted me to take a chance. I had an opportunity at that, at that time, which I wasn't sure whether to go for or not. So it was really helpful. If you've not caught anything from God, please don't worry. Sometimes it takes a little time to learn to catch from God. I would encourage you to go back to God and ask that question again at another time or, or now. Or go and chat to God and tell him how you feel about the fact that you didn't catch anything and see if he responds to that. If anyone wants to share what God has said, feel free to share that on the chat feeds. Heads up, I would love to gather some of these experiences of what, God's, what you've caught from God to share and encourage others. Maybe next time we do All Age, we'll share some of those things. So Don's going to join me now, and then we're going to spend just a short time chatting to God and catching from him to see if there's anything specific he is doing or if there's anything he wants to say to us now. Cool, th thank you, Lawrence, and th thank you for inviting me in. Mm -hmm. um, Within some of what Lorna just said, she used the word, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, which is straight out of the story of Samuel and Eli. Um, so we're just going to do that now. And can I just encourage mm. all of you, just wherever you are, I'm going to pray that speak, Lord, your servant's listening. And where you are now, I just get the sense that the Lord is wanting to speak to you. We kind of do this most weeks and it's, it, it's great fun. And I, but if just we do it, that's not everything that Jesus had in mind for this. This is something for everyone. So let's just pray that now and see mm. what the Lord says. Lord, for all of us watching, your, watching this live stream now, Lord, we just ask, we say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Mm. 
May we hear your voice. May we hear your heart. May we sense you in all of the different ways that Lorna just outlined to us. Mm. And if that's you now on the live stream, you're hearing something in whatever way it is, please yep. uh, either share it with us yep. or, or, or share it with whoever you're with right now. Yeah. Let's let's get some chatter going on the on the on the text feeds. So I was looking at this, we've got this game under our, under our table, we don't play it very often, it's just called On the Dot and you have to line up the dots and I just think God might be saying something about alignment for somebody. Um, it might be to do with things in your life, so jobs, I don't know, things that, there are things coming into alignment. But I also think that God might be doing some realigning physically for people um, where bones or things aren't quite aligned properly. So, and I think God might be doing that now. So if that's you um, and you feel like a realignment in your body, please, please let us know. Um, Lorna mentioned uh, Monopoly earlier. And I just get a picture of the Monopoly board, but I get the picture of the corner, which says go on it. Ah. And, and I just get the sense of with, with go, we, each time we go round, we, we, we go again. We start there, obviously, but we go again. And I just get the sense of some, maybe some, one of you is watching this, you've got this sense of you've paused a little, you were happy in uh, in Bond Street or Mayfair or wherever you were, you just kind of paused metaphorically, of course you're not up in Mayfair at the minute, um, but you've paused and the Lord's saying, just, just go again. You, whatever it is you would normally have done or whatever it is you did last time you went round the board, just start doing that again, that's a good... Good encouragement. Awesome. Hopefully. If you are in Mayfair or Bond Street and watching, or in any of the places <laughs> on the Monopoly board and watching, then maybe this is for you. It may well be. <laughs> Good point. Anything else? Um, yeah, I just had a sense that God wanted to give somebody hope. Um, it's been a really tricky time, so I just think God wants to just overwhelm you with, remind you of his hope. Fantastic. Um, Lorna did this earlier. Uh, we've, we've got this book on our coffee table, uh, which is from the story of TLG is called Out of the Ordinary. I've got a sense that someone here has this book and uh, maybe the Lord's just asking you just to read it again. Um, it's a very inspiring story um, and it, uh, ours has got a really nice postcard in it. There you go, that was from us. Um, yeah, sometimes the Lord just speaks through the mm. things that surround us. I've got my Tele remote on the on the coffee table, and I just get the sense of we've been doing an awful lot of things remotely recently, uh, even like church. Mm. Um, and this may seem slightly not correct at this time, but I just get the sense of the Lord asking us, or maybe asking a few of us, um, things that we've been doing remotely to do, uh, just to get up and to do. So whatever that is, that for some of you, you might have been. I don't know, um, doing a, a Bible study remotely online, but the Lord's just asking you just to get up and do it, take hold of your Bible and just whatever it is. For some of us, um, actually, we, we just need to <clears throat> get up and do certain things. Um, I think for us this week, with the start of lockdown again, the Lord just gave us a little nudge. What you're allowed to do with lockdown 2.0 is have a support bubble. So if there's someone else who is perhaps on their own at this time and we're 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 all right in that we're as a family here but for our friends who are on their own um actually they may be feeling a little bit lonely this time mm. so the the remote for me i think as i'm resonating with that um that word that that picture of the remote control we got up and we invited one of our single friends to bubble with us just so that we could make sure um he's looked after at this time if uh, that may be something that some of you guys want to do watching this. If it is you and you're not sure who to bubble with and you, you, you're you available, do let us know. We'll put you in touch with anybody who would like to be bubbled with. If you know who that person is that perhaps the Lord is just nudging you on, just give them a call after this um, and just see if they want to bubble with you. Maybe have them for dinner once a week or something like that. Just whatever it is, as long as everybody's in a COVID safe environment, we're all right. So don't how, tell us how that worked for you. So you saw the, how, how, was, how were you catching from God? You saw the remote. Yeah, it was just, it was just on, the, on the coffee table in front of us. Um, 
So did you get, did you, was it your emotions or did you get something in your mind? Did you get a sense in your mind? The, the sense I had was of, of the word remote. We're doing a lot of things remotely. Ah, okay. uh, everything, everyone's feeling a bit remote. As I went to pick it up, the sense that I then got was that we need to be doing something. It's not, we've been remote, we've been separate, yeah. but there was an action about doing something. Okay. And that somehow... Uh, so the, so the word like, remote popped yeah. into your head in terms of what yes. you thought, so that's in your mind. Yeah. I think when I saw the game, it was um, this game, I saw it, so I've used my eyes, but it, again, it was in my mind, just uh, I got the word, the word alignment popped into my mind. So God was using, um, he was speaking into my imagination, using that, that uh, dropping a word into my mind. I, I, this is, I'm going slightly off, I don't know, maybe I'm not, um, I'm not quite sure what this is. The sense I get is of cartoons. The one I see is the film cartoon um, Monsters, Inc. Just because, actually, it's brilliant. I, I really enjoy it. And I just get a sense for some of you, there are, you've got your favourite cartoon and you're trying to work out if God can speak to you through your favourite cartoon. And, and I think the, the answer that the Lord's giving us right now is yes. As long as it fits in with all those things that Lorna <laughs> mentioned, I think... God can speak to you through your favourite cartoons. We've got one more song to finish our live stream together this morning. Don't forget, after the live stream, if you want to come and chat, say hello on Zoom, we've, we'll put the Zoom information at the bottom of, of the YouTube and Facebook feeds. We'd love to say hello to you, particularly if you're new to Epsom Vineyard. We'd love to meet you. I'm just going to pray for you all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and give you his peace. The Lord be gracious to you, the Lord's favour rest on you, and the name of the Lord be above your household, be surrounding everything you are and everything your family is, everything your home is. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Speak, Father, and I will listen to your voice. Speak, Father, and I will listen to your voice. My heart to you I bring, for you to be my king. I have made my choice. Speak, Father, and I will listen to your voice. Father, and I will do just as you say. Speak, Father, and I will do just as you say. My heart to you I give, for you my life to live. I will now obey. Speak, Father, I will do just as you say. Speak, Father, and I will listen to your voice. Speak, Father, and I will listen to your voice. My heart to you I bring. For you to be my king, I have made my choice. Speak, Father, and I will listen to your voice. Speak, Father, and I will listen to your voice.
the sweetest of love.